Good morning and welcome on this second Sunday of Advent, Sunday, December 6th. This is a collaborative service between St. Mark's Episcopal Church in Westford, Massachusetts and Trinity Chapel in Shirley, Massachusetts. We are filming today from St. Mark's. With me today is Marsha Regner, who is singing, and Lee Yezik, who is our Minister of Music. We have made some changes to the way we're doing music today because we're stepping up our COVID precautions and making sure we stand further apart when we sing. But I think you'll enjoy getting to see Marsha visibly as she's singing today, as well as hearing both our voices uh, with best of all, hers ascendant over mine, which is no bad thing. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn number 65. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together the collect of the day. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, 
to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This Sunday, we light the second candle on our Advent wreath. We light this candle as a sign of the coming light of Christ. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let all creation sing for joy at the coming of the Lord. The Lord of hosts is coming to restore us. God's face will shine and we will be saved. Light dawns for the righteous and joy to the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord. Give thanks to God's holy name. A reading from Isaiah 40. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term and her penalty is paid. That she has received from the Lord's hand double all of her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. And every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely people are grass. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the Lord, word of our gods will stand forever. Go you up to a high mountain, 
O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear, says the cities of Judah. Here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd, and he will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. Today's psalm is Psalm 85, verses 1 and 2, and 8 through 13. Please join me in saying this together. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all of their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth shall meet together Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. This week's epistle reading is from 2 Peter chapter 3 verses 8 through 15. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to right repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness? waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will be melt into fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. The beginning of the good news of Jesus, the Son of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. 
as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Hi, I'm the Reverend Martha Hubbard, Regional Canon for the North and West region of our diocese, and so pleased to be with you today as your preacher. This second Sunday of Advent, John the Baptist, cousin of our Lord, comes into focus again through our Gospel lesson. I think of John as the patron saint of Advent, one who was well versed in disorientation and wilderness walking, which are themes of this preparatory season. John lived in such a way, wearing the simplest of attire and eating locusts and wild honey, that his very being proclaimed that God can be trusted to provide everything we need even in the wilderness. Back in normal, pre-COVID days, John's ways seemed to me wild and unconventional. But this year, I'm drawn to him as one who understands what many of us are going through right now. This year, instead of wooing us into the wilderness, John finds us here already, disrupted by pandemic and social upheaval. The whole of these last nine months have been an advent of sorts for many of us. Something new is being gestated among us. The processes and structures of our lives set askew. Our ways of understanding our world significantly upended. Many of us are left feeling a confounding mixture of devastation, powerlessness, and guarded hope hope that something new is about to be born among us. If this is where we are, John is a good traveling companion for us. John proclaims that the experience of wilderness can be a doorway of change, of repentance, by which humanity can prepare for the Christ who is coming. When John uses the word repent, it can be hard for some of us to hear. It has sometimes been misused as a weapon against people who are in one way or another on the margins, not like the majority in some way. But John himself is on the margins, and he calls us to stay there with him. John does not point accusingly at anyone. John uses the word repent not as a weapon but as an invitation to move us past longings for certainty and comfort to the wilderness of disorientation, which can lead us to radical reliance on God. The Greek word for repent is metanoia, which literally means turn around. Metanoia, to significantly change course, to look at life from a radically different vantage point. In these last nine months, we have had many opportunities to lead, see our life and our way of life from different vantage points. We've glimpsed how old solutions and ways of responding just don't work any longer. Socially distant from one another, we've recognized the immense value of being together, grieving for those who have died. We see our need to seize every opportunity to say, I love you, I value you, I need you. With so many of us struggling financially, we see the need to revise how we share the wealth of our nation, treating it more as commonwealth than as individual wealth. Aware of deep social divisions and injustices in our land, we recognize there is so much more we need to do to fulfill our promises in our baptismal covenant, 
to seek Christ in all persons, to respect the dignity of every human being. In the face of it all, many of us have experienced a level of powerlessness which we have not felt before and may not be comfortable with. Metanoia, turn around, says John the Baptist. Look not to yourself, but to the power of God. And this turning need not be a Herculean effort. It can be as simple as daily starting by humbly asking God to set aside our assumptions and our fears, and then to inspire our thinking, our decisions, our intuitions about how to lead the day of life ahead of us. Metanoia, spiritual turning, opens us to accept life as it is, not as we wish it were. This acceptance is never easy, but it is possible when we experience God in Christ as our ultimate source of strength. The writer of the second letter to Peter reaches out across time this morning to us and points out that everything that we can see and touch will eventually dissolve and pass away. But who we are, that is how we spend our time in this world as people claimed by God in Christ and formed by God in Christ, that is what ultimately matters. Here are some words that we heard from this second letter of Peter this morning. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you be in leading lives of holiness and godliness in accordance with his promise? We wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. John the Baptist points to the water he is standing in and indicates that part of this faithful waiting for new heavens and a new earth is the act of waiting ever deeper into the life of baptism. I don't think it matters whether we were sprinkled with water as an infant or fully dunked under the surface as an adult or anything in between. The moment of baptism should not be confused with the life of the baptized. There is no question that that moment was powerful. The Holy Spirit hovered. We were cradled in prayer and healing waters touched us. We were marked as Christ's own forever. Then the life of baptism began. We were given to each other with our baptismal covenant as a roadmap to begin the journey on this way of love as part of the Jesus movement, as our presiding bishop likes to say. To live life as the baptized together is our ongoing call. How evident the power of acting as community in this way has become since we have been parted from meeting together in person. But our physical separation has not confounded us. As we gathered in our virtual diocesan convention in early November this year, I listened to the words of our bishops to us and to the many reports of the ministries that we share together in this diocesan community, and I felt so inspired. And as I interact with the lay and clergy leaders of the north and west region of our diocese, I witnessed time and again that even in these difficult days, there is a strong commitment among us to this way of love. As a church, you, my brothers and sisters, inspire me. You revive my faith in Christ whenever it is flagging, ever turning and returning to God to renew your strength, ever learning more together and from one another, ever praying ardently and worshiping joyfully ever blessing those to whom God sends you, ever going out in service in Christ's name, ever returning again to honor Sabbath and to be replenished by rest. Together, we have found the strength and the creativity to step through the doorway of wilderness repentance 
so that we can continue to proclaim the one who came among us and claimed us, the one we daily ask to keep us on this way of love. I count it a great blessing to be a diocesan staff member tasked with supporting and companioning our parishes along this way. Thank you. I'll end now with some beautiful words from today's readings, which speak to me of God's incredible faithfulness to those who keep their feet on this way of love. I'm weaving them together here that they might be a sort of bouquet of hope and inspiration to take with you as you continue on this way. Comfort, O oh comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid. God will feed the flock like a shepherd. God will gather the lambs in God's arms and carry them close to heart and gently lead the mother sheep. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for God is speaking peace to God's faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to God. Truly, salvation is very near to those who fear God, that God's glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make God's path straight. In accordance with God's promise, we await new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. In the name of Christ Jesus, the one who is coming, amen. Let us join together in offering our prayers for the church and for the world. Lord Jesus Christ, we pray for the church, your body and the world. Bless our bishops, clergy, lay leaders and congregations with the courage to lead in these times and sustain them with your love. Deliver us, we pray, from the temptations of power, bondage of racism, class and consumerism and all that keeps us from embracing our true shared identity as your beloved children. Free us from fear that we may bear witness to your liberating love in this broken world. Lord of life and love, hear our prayer. We pray for this nation, for our president, for our president-elect, for our elected representatives and all who have the power to make change. Open their hearts and ours to see and address the human needs of those suffering from the effects of this COVID-19 pandemic. Guide our leaders towards policies that uphold the dignity of our most vulnerable communities, especially immigrants and persons of color who are bearing so much of the suffering. Open their eyes and ours to see all who are ill and all who have lost their livelihoods as fellow human beings, not expendable statistics. Lord of life and love, hear our prayer. We ask your protection for workers we often ignore, whose work sustains our whole society and who are now at risk, for warehouse, grocery, and delivery workers, those who harvest and process our food, and all workers vulnerable to contagion. Turn the hearts of employers and policymakers to provide for their safety and security, and give us all grace to be mindful of one another's safety. Lord of life and love, hear our prayer. We pray for healing for all who are affected by this pandemic, for all who are ill, that they may receive prompt and appropriate care, and for those who are dying alone, that they may find peace and comfort. Lord of life and love, hear our prayer. For the scientists and physicians throughout the world who are working towards treatments and vaccines, that their work may bear fruit in ways that safe timely and fully available to all. Lord of life and love, hear our prayer. For our local community here, for those who are isolated, lonely, or fearful, and for all in need, that they may be sustained in faith, hope, and love. Lord of life and love, hear our prayer. 
for all who tend to the sick and to, for their families, especially doctors and nurses and first responders, that they may find continued strength and support, and that they may be protected with needed equipment and needed leave and compensation. Lord of life and love, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially for those in this time who have died alone, that they may be held in the company of all your saints, and for those who mourn loved ones they have not been able to accompany in their last hours. Lord of life and love, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. As we come to the time of the Liturgy of the Table, if you have picked up uh, communion wafers this week, I invite you to take those out to place those on the table in front of you. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth. 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you gracious God, send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit, in the fullness of time put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God to the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith. At this time, if you have communion wafers, I invite you to go ahead and partake of communion. Eat those wafers now as we will here in the church. If you don't have wafers, go ahead and pray the prayer of spiritual communion, which is printed in your bulletin.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you now and remain with you always.
Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you so much for joining our worship this morning via video, via YouTube and Facebook. We're so glad that you are all part of our worship today and so happy to be united and connected in this way. Later on this week, we will have a uh, for Trinity folks on December 9th. We are tentatively planning a, a video chat evening, 7 p.m. Uh, via Zoom. Just a chance to hang out with the new priest and get to know me, ask any questions you want to ask about the collaboration with St. Mark's and the uh, community that has gathered. Um, what's going on with us? What, what happens next? Questions about the rectory? Anything that you would like to know about? We invite you to join us on Wednesday night, the 9th. You can watch your weekly email for links and for how to participate in that. Um, we are also going to be continuing here at St. Mark's our uh, food drive for the Westford Food Pantry. Um, and we are talking about other ways to expand our ministry to feeding the hungry. That's always been one of our passions here at St. Mark's. And if you've been watching the news at all, you've been seeing the long, long, long lines in so many places as people seek help feeding their families and feeding themselves. And we are starting to think about how can we creatively support that. So if you have some ideas or you'd like to be part of the team that is uh, working on that, um, you can go ahead and keep an eye on our web page, keep an eye on the Facebook page, or shoot me an email and I'll make sure you get looped in on that. Uh, we are still, as we come forward and start looking towards Christmas Eve, we are going to need some help with worship. We are planning to try something brand new on Christmas Eve. We are going to do a parking lot drive-in worship. We have purchased an FM transmitter so that everybody can sit in their cars, hear the worship service, watch me standing up at the top of the hill, um, and hopefully hear every word that is spoken. You're gonna be invited to sing carols, because hey, if we're all contained in our own cars, we can sing as much and as joyously as we like. Um, and we will be doing that. In order to make that happen, though, it's going to take some extra help. So if you are somebody who might be willing to lend a hand on Christmas Eve, please let me know, because we're sure going to need the extra help. This afternoon at 1 p.m., we're going to be doing some caroling on the back lawn. We're going to be spaced 20 feet apart by household, but I hope a lot of you will come, because we've got some mics we're going to set up, and we're going to see if we can't record some carols uh, for our Lessons in Carols online service for Christmas Eve. If it doesn't work out, the worst thing that'll happen is we'll get a chance to be together, well-spaced, and sing some Christmas carols as we continue to look forward to Christmas during this Advent season. Thank you for being with us. Please do check your bulletin and your uh, emails for other events that may be coming up during this coming week, and have a wonderful week.